What's up guys, it's Jake and Richie with Sonic Dad and we're here today to talk about project number 81, 81 the Sonic Aerobat Control Stick Mark II. Hi, it's Richie. Welcome to this episode of the Sonic Builders Club, where we're building Project 81, the Sonic Aerobat Control Stick Mark II. This is Mark II because the original Project 9 used a small die-cast airplane. So I've redone this project and added some features. First of all, a much larger airplane. This is a 148 scale. I'm using plastic models that are pre-painted and decorated and with just a little assembly required and they can all be done with a screwdriver. There's lots of different models available and they cost about 10 or 15 bucks. Another nice feature, while it still has the control stick that allows kids to uh, fly it around, which is really fun, this version has a removable control stick. So you can play with the, the airplane either way, which is a nice option. Another reason to use a larger scale airplane is it gives you room to take the fun to the next level, which is to add an electric motor on propeller driven airplanes. That just adds some realism and some fun. You can see I've got the battery pack right here. So that's one example. Here's another example. This is a B-17. This has four engines, so I've got four electric motors. This fuselage is much wider, so I was able to put the battery pack inside there instead of on the control stick, which means I can make this one removable also. I'll show you how to do this conversion, adding the electric motors and the battery pack in another Sonic Builders Club that will be coming up real soon. This project will focus on how to build a control stick and attach it to an airplane. So let's get started. Now as far as materials go for this project, of course you'll need a plastic model airplane like this, a dollar store hairbrush, we're going to use the handle off of that. Also need a, uh, I use a Papermate Eagle brand disposable pen, we'll be using the pen tube, and a quarter inch diameter hardwood dowel. Before you start assembling your model, it's a good idea to do some pre-planning. We're going to need to find a surface to mount our pen tube to, and it looks like this tail wheel is going to get in the way, so I'm just going to remove that altogether, and we'll have a nice flat surface here to mount our tube. Now we need to cut a one inch long section of this pen tube and I'm going to use my mat to measure that. Put my X-Acto blade on top, roll it back and forth a little bit, push through and we got it. What I've done is use a piece of 100 grit sandpaper to sand a flat spot on this tube. Now we'll test fit the dowel. We want a nice snug fit but not too tight, not too loose. If you need to, you can use some sandpaper to sand this diameter down a little bit. This one actually fits just about right. This step is optional, but I'm using a black marker to color the dowel black. I think it looks better. And I'm going from the end about eight inches. That should be plenty. This is the location where I want to glue my tube on, so I'm going to use an X-Acto knife and scratch up the paint, rub the surface up so the glue will stick nicely to it. Now with a high temp hot glue gun, I'm going to add a bead of glue on the surface that I prepared. Make sure I've got my flat on the tube oriented and attach it. Push it in place and I'm going to make sure it is centered right down the center of the fuselage. That looks good. When that glue has cooled, we can go in and add a small fillet on either side of the tube to give it some additional strength. And with a wet finger you can come in and smooth out that glue fillet. Make it look nice. Yeah, that's good. Well, I changed my mind a little bit, decided to go with this brush design. It has a rubberized handle. I think it'll work better with my P40. What we'll do now is cut this. You can use a hacksaw. I'm going to use my bandsaw, but we're going to cut it right here on the seam. Okay, I've got the handle cut off. Now I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole for our dowel. Come up about 3 eighths from the bottom. 
and make sure you drill through straight in both axes. And we'll just test this hull size. That is perfect. Now I'm going to carefully insert the dowel into the tube right up to the end here. I'll lay this out on my mat. What I want to do is measure a distance between the tail and the handle. I want three inches between those, roughly. You can adjust that to your liking. And what I'll do is take my black marker and mark the back side of the handle. And even though it is black, that mark will show up so I know where to cut my dowel. So I've cut the length of the dowel. Now I'm just gonna mark that in black. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of hot glue inside this handle. And then just push this dowel in to the other side. And carefully wipe off the excess glue. Try not to burn yourself. And the handle is done. Now all you have to do is take the handle, slide it into the tube on the airplane, line it up so it's vertical, and you're ready for your maiden flight. Now let me show you a couple other versions I made. If you like World War I aircraft, here is a D7. You notice I've got a Lego minifigure in here. Um, I only had to make a slight modification on the opening to that uh, cockpit. You can do that with an X-Acto knife. This little guy came from a used Lego store and I used a piece of white trash bag as a scarf tied around his neck. So that adds a lot of fun. And check in the description for a video about uh, buying used Legos and minifigures. So that's kind of fun. And this is a DR1 triplane. You can see I've got a little uh, Lego minifigure in there. That's Von Richthofen, the Red Baron. And uh, he actually fits fine in that cockpit opening. I think this is my favorite of all the planes I've built. Turned out really fun. And here is an F-117 stealth fighter. I really like how it turned out. You can see where I mounted the tube on this model. And a different P-51, different color. Um, there's the mounting tube for it. And what you'll find out with the different airplanes is you'll just have to get creative on where to mount this tube. You can see on this one I left the tail wheel in place because it wasn't in the way. So there's lots of planes out there, lots of variety. You can build a whole fleet. Well, that's it for this project. I really hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out the companion video to this project that shows it in action. Uh, combined with Project 10, the Masking Tape Airport, it was really fun. Got my nieces and nephews and Jake's son and had a blast. So check out that video. There will be a link for it in the description below. And also uh, keep your eye open for the next Sonic Builders Club where I will show you how to add an electric motor to this project and that adds quite a bit of fun. Takes it to the next level. Well that's it for this episode. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Jake and I really appreciate your support. Till next time, I'm Richie. We'll see you later. Unique uh -huh. New York. Unique New York. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey what's up guys? It's Jake and Richie with Sonic Dad and we are here today to talk about Proch. Whoa, hey, who's calling now? <laughs> Let's turn that one down. Thanks for watching. If you like what we're doing, click here to subscribe to our channel. Or click here to visit our website.